Hello, how you doing? My name is Antonio. My page is Unapologetically Black. I ask that you like and subscribe to the page and share this message. It's important that we get this message out. I need you to understand that Europeans left England seeking religious freedom. This is why America has a separation between church and state. Europe was ran under a system, political system called the Fugilist System. The feudal system was created by the Pope endorsing the king, giving the king all of the land, forcing the people to have to serve the land and the king in order to be righteous with God. Christianity enslaved white people. You have to understand that. The only reason why they brought it back and tried to make America a Christian nation is because they used Christianity in a second time and applied the system that was applied to them in Europe to us to enslave black people. Feudalism was a give and take system. At the top of the pyramid, we had the king. The king gives land to the lords, also known as the nobles. The lords in return, divvied out land, also known as fief, to the knights, and they in return gave protection to the peasants, also known as serfs. The serfs gave food and services to the knights as well as the lords, and the lords gave the king protection because the knights worked for the lords, and because of this, they provided military service for the king. So whenever the king needed an army, he had to rely on the lords to get the knights to build that army. Peasants didn't own the land they lived on. They rented it from their land lord. They and their neighbors shared a plow between them and they combined their oxen into teams to till the soil together. There's not much social mobility either. Their parents and grandparents worked this same land. They didn't even have the legal right to leave the property without the permission from their lord. They were unfree laborers mere serfs in a feudal economy. Let's be clear, all this was done under the banner of Catholic, Roman Catholic Church. You have to first understand that all of the kings, of uh, the white kings of England, the Anglo-Saxons, were ordained kings and possessors of their land by the Roman Catholic Church Pope, saying that he is a conduit of God and he speaks to God and God said that this is their land. This is why the Queen of England owns all the land in England and they can only lease it for up to 99 years. And then it has to go back to the crown. This is the system that we inherited in slavery. This is why Europeans left Christianity in Europe and came to America seeking a way to practice religion they own because they was enslaved under Christianity. And now they want to bring it back in order to enslave you again under Christianity. When did they give you the Bible? They gave you the Bible when you were slaves. Travel back to the year 1500, we'd see every kingdom across Western Europe declaring their allegiance to the Catholic Church. And if you were to say that some nations were to break away from that church, Honestly, it wouldn't be the most shocking thing in the world. There was mass corruption, heaps of power placed into the hands of one person, the Pope, and many priests had little to no education or training. And so when someone like Luther came on the scene, much of the clergy were no match for him in debating what the Bible actually said. The Catholic Church was empowered by the ignorance of the people. So you was not allowed to have the Bible in your own language at the time. Only the Pope really had full access to the Bible. That's why when something body like Martin Luther King came along, who was promoting you have the Bible in your own language, clergymen could not debate with him or challenge him on what was in the Bible because not even the clergy knew what was in the Bible. They only knew to pass down what was told to them from the Pope. You have to understand that they was forced into ignorance in order so that they could be easily controlled the same way that America did with black people, banning us and not allowing us to read 
and be educated in order for them to be able to enslave you. You have to understand that Europeans were enslaved under Roman under the Roman Catholic Church prior to them coming to America, enslaving black people. This is why they came to America and established a separation from church and state. But if you were to put all your money on one kingdom who would not break away under any circumstances, you'd bet your life savings on England. Now ask yourself, how was the king empowered to be able to divvy out the land if he needed protection? The king was empowered to give it out the land is because his power was in power and thrown by him by the Pope. The Pope policies and their teachings taught that the king would be the head of the church in that area under the Pope and that God ordained him and his family to have that land and for you to serve the land was for you to serve God. All this was done under the Roman Catholic Church, Pope ruling. And most of all, the King of England and the Pope always tended to be pretty tight with each other, yet somehow England went from being the least likely kingdom to break away to the one that actually created its own church. And to figure out how, we need to get to know this guy here. Listen, how could one man make the most Catholic of all the countries actually become the country that is most openly opposed to the Catholic faith? The reason why he was so dedicated to the Roman Church initially is because the Roman Catholic Church is the one who gave him his authenticity. The actuality, he did not come from a Pacific bloodline that the Roman Catholic Church had one time made or uh, pledged as the king of that land. He is part of the transformation to the Anglo-Saxons taking over Britain from the black people. This is what people look like in Western Europe and Britain 10,000 years ago, not what we would have expected. One, two, three, come on! I'm Chris Stringer, I'm a research leader in human origins at the Natural History Museum in London and I'm holding here this wonderful reconstructed head of Cheddar Man and I've been studying the skeleton of Cheddar Man for some 40 years or so and now with DNA technology we've got the whole genome of Cheddar Man and here we've got a scientific reconstruction of what he looked like. Uh, we've got his hair form, his skin, his blue eyes and that dark skin color, that combination really striking. And getting out of here, information about his biology, the fact that, for example, he couldn't digest milk uh, because that came. Most black people are lactose intolerant. Most people of African descent is lactose intolerant. There is small tribes that are uh, exempt to that. Came in with the advent of farming after the time of Cheddar Man. So we're getting his whole biology, how he relates to people in Europe at the time, and how he relates to people in Britain now. Having blue eyes is not limited to Asians or Europeans. Black Africans can also have blue eyes and claims that photos of Africans with blue eyes on social media and other internet platforms are fake are incorrect. There are Africans who by virtue of the genetic packages received from both or either parent as well as the concentration of melanin in their eye region, have eye colors outside of the statistical norm, making them rare within the context of the African community. But this is neither a mere coincidence nor a mistake as Africa is home to the first known human from whose genetic endowments all other physical human traits in the world have been biologically derived. We have to understand when Rome invaded Britain, it was blacks in Britain. I want us to understand who are the Anglo-Saxons and how did they take control of Britain and you will understand that that was done with the fall of the Roman Empire as a military might and rose again as a uh, at the Roman Catholic Church. 
So young Henry was born in 1491 when his father, Henry VII, was sitting on the throne. Now, this is really important. Henry VII didn't become the king with ease. His claim to the throne was really weak. Basically, he had an uncle who was the lover of the queen after her husband died, and he claimed his lineage from the queen's lover, Jasper Tudor, not exactly someone who came from a long line of previous kings. And so Henry VII became the king by successfully challenging Richard III, then defeating him on the battlefield in 1485. And if Henry VII didn't have a long list of fathers and grandfathers who were kings, he needed to find another way of being seen as the right king. And so Henry VII and the Pope became very tight, and the Pope gave God's blessing, so to speak, upon Henry VII. Well, I want you to be able to see the bloodline switch that was done with the Catholic Church. You can see that this Harry was not directly related to who originally had that throne. This is why you hear black people say originally at one time there was kings in medieval Europe. You can see how the Roman Catholic Church transferred that authority over to the Anglo-Saxons. But you have to know your history and understand what really happened. Supposed to replace his father as the king because he was actually the second born son to his brother Arthur. And so in 1501, at the age of 15, Arthur married Princess Catherine of Aragon, who was the daughter of the King and Queen of Spain. But tragedy struck young Arthur and he actually died only 20 weeks later from an unknown illness. And so this left 10 year old Henry as the heir to the throne, but his father kept him out of public life and he gave him few responsibilities. Now Henry VII was keen to keep an alliance with Spain, so he suggested to young Henry that he should marry Princess Catherine, but Henry refused. I mean, he was only 12. So come 1509, Henry VII died at age 52, and so 17 year old Henry VIII became the King of England. Now, a few weeks before he was coronated, Henry decided that he would actually marry the 23-year-old widow, Catherine, and they quietly married. So Henry married his brother's widow. And in 15... Again, if you understand history, you would know the reason for the arranged marriage for Spain because they had not so recently went to war and conquered Spain, so they was trying to keep that allegiance with Spain to England, to the, to the, uh, to the Roman crown because they was trying to claim Spain from the blacks. So you have to understand religion was used as a means to go and conquer Spain. And when they conquered Spain, the church issued a decree ordering the enslavement of all the black and Jews and Muslims in Spain. So have to understand the Christianity enforced slavery upon us as a people. You have to know this is why they left Europe seeking religious freedom, but then reinstated Christianity and trying to force America to be a white Christian nation because they intend to enslave you under those white Christian nation policies. <laughs> 